You were at my side all along. Yes, the Moonlight's great sword. The Dark Moon great sword in Elden Ring, a legendary weapon, and certainly one that needs no explanation or introduction. It's beautiful, and it is powerful. But do you realize just how powerful it can be? Yeah! 6,000 damage a swing. Which, I don't know about you, is pretty ridiculous to say you can just spam this for no cost forever. So today, I'm going to unlock the secrets of you. My guiding moonlight. Hello then, my fellow tarnished, and welcome one and all, and those of you that know that this weapon is truly the best weapon. For those of you that don't have it, or don't know where to get it, or don't know what it is, I will link down below a full guide on the entire process of acquiring it, as it is, let's just say, involved. But today, I am going to unlock its full potential, because it's very unique in how much damage you can actually apply to this weapon. Now, what do I mean? I need a hug. Well, the skill Moonlight Greatsword found on the Dark Moon Greatsword can be described thusly. A glint stone sorcery charged skill weapon buff delivered with held heavy attacks. And you might think, okay, that's very long and convoluted. You just press the button, your weapon glows, and then you just fire out waves of light. Well, what are we talking about here? Well, the thing is, that very specific wording I used is very important. Because it's Ash of War, it's weapon skill being that specific makes it arguably the most buffable weapon in terms of pumping its damage output in the entire game. You can get a 135% damage increase on your blast of icy moonlight. And that's obviously a little bit silly. It's a lot of damage! You're seeing how much damage it does and how easily it does it. And I personally completely missed this. I totally did until I took it back out the box after a few weeks of uh, betraying it with other weapons and had this kind of realization that I now would love to share with you guys so you too can have a nuclear Dark Moon Greatsword. So what am I talking about then? Well, let's go through everything, shall we? The weapon is decently well scaled with int, and of course I have 80 int and a plus 10. This is the damage it does without anything affecting it, right? About 1800, which honestly is pretty damn solid, but a far cry from the 6000 that you saw. So what's going on here? Well, let's talk talismans first of all. It deals magic damage, so we can add in the magic scorpion for plus 12% magic damage. You get this from Saluvis's quest line. It, of course, is a weapon skill, so we can add in Alexander's talisman for an extra 15% damage as a reward from, yes, the Alexander quest line. Okay, cool. But let's take it a little bit further. You can add in Godfrey's icon, which increases the damage of charged skills and spells, because guess what? This counts as a charged skill. Despite the fact that you're not actually charging and then releasing, it still works, which lets us add another 15% onto it. There's only like 10 skills in the entire game this even works with, so we're very lucky that the Dark Great Sword is one of them. That is a reward for defeating the boss in this Ever Jail here. Then we can add the Ritual Sword Talisman. That's just an extra 10% damage to everything for everyone, no matter what you're using it with. Found in the Lux Ruins in Altus Plateau, a very simple grab. Now, despite the attack of the Dark Moon being a held heavy attack, the extra damage on held heavy attacks talisman doesn't work, which is curious, but that's also 10%, so we're basically just representing that with the Ritual Sword. So already you're seeing how you can get a four set of talismans that all increase the damage of this one attack, which is normally quite hard to pull off. And they're quite potent increases as well. We've got a double 15% in here. 
But we keep going then. Of course, we have the Wondrous Physic. That's an extra 20% magic damage from the uh, tier in there, which is, yep, an extra 20% damage. We then have a little bit of Jelly Shield, the Jellyfish Great Shield. This is an item that, honestly, more people need to use more often, because while the buff lasts, it lasts for a good 30 seconds, every bit of damage you deal from anywhere via anything is increased by 20%. And that is obviously very, very good, and we can apply that here very easily, and it works wonders. Having a shield in one hand, great sword in the other, it's kind of cool, and I love the glowing red and then glowing blue uh, contrasting look this provides. Then we have Terra Magica. This is a sorcery that increases magic damage by 35%, which is a lot. But note there I said magic damage. It's not just sorcery specifically, it's magic damage. So it affects magic damage on weapon, it affects skills that deal magic damage, it affects the Dark Moon Greatsword. And then if all of this wasn't enough, there is one final hidden extra, this little piece de resistance in the form of Rogier's Spell Blade set. You get this from going along with his quest line, or ignoring him until he dies in the round table hold, and then picking it off his corpse. But in any case, every piece of his armor increases the damage of magic damage dealing skills by 2%, giving you an extra 8% damage for wearing his set, which all comes together to make plus 135% damage, resulting in spammable blasts of monstrous proportions. Now that's what I call Dark Moon Magic. And this is on top of the fact that it's ranged, it's got quite a wide arc, it deals loads of frostbite buildup, and it has really high stagger damage, which all just add to how silly this actually becomes. You just walk through levels one-shotting every single enemy, or two-shotting at most. God forbid you have to do two attacks for one enemy. I know, it's difficult, right? And then when you get to bosses, I mean, annihilating them in 2-3 Blast 2 like they were absolutely nothing, as you're seeing on a few of the New Game Plus targets that have been popping up. Obviously, in PvP, if you connect with the enemy, then they're just going to get one shot, no questions asked. And it's exactly as easy or hard as you find connecting the Dark Moon Greatsword Wave with an enemy. Now, it's not like you have to use Terra Magica and lock yourself to the spot. Even just the normal mobile setup version of this, which is everything but Terra Magica, still does ridiculous damage. Hell, you don't even need to run around with a jellyfish shield. Just having the passives from the talismans and uh, the Spellblade set makes it absolutely incredible and entirely insane when it comes to just the raw damage output that this weapon is truly capable of. So there it is, essentially just a PSA of, do you realize how powerful the Darkman Greatsword could actually get? A Ash of War weapon skill that uniquely is buffable by eight separate buffs in the game. Now, you could go further than that. You could add stuff like Golden Vow for an extra blanket 10% if you have spare levels to put into Faith, which I don't, and so on and so forth. But you will be hard-pressed to find a Ash of War that is more increased by a set of four talismans than Moonlight Greatsword here, and I think that's really quite special. Let me know if you're now reaching for your gorgeous Moonlight Blade. Until we meet again then, uh, please subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss future builds, guides, tips, tricks, funny bits, all of the good stuff. Consider supporting the future of this channel on Patreon down below, it really does mean the absolute world to us, and is what keeps us going, so thank you. A good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.